So the first thing we're gonna do is, of course, turn on our sewing machine. It's already threaded, we don't need to worry about that. One thing though, we're gonna start with a plain stitch at a zero, the default settings. So by default, drop the presser foot, the needle is moved to the far left position. I'm gonna use this guide here to designate how much seam allowance I want. And as it bumps up against here, it goes through and sews straight. We're gonna start by putting our pieces, our panels to the fabric face, the right sides facing each other. We're gonna sew the garment in such a way that we're sewing on the inside so all the seams will be hidden. And since I previously marked the garment front, leave the back, I'm gonna open up those panels and put them where the tapes face. It's easiest to line them up by their armhole. For the sake of the video, I use these two because these binder clips, they keep everything tight. I'm gonna clip this side because I'm not working with it. I don't want it to move around a whole lot. I'm gonna start on the opposite side sewing. As you can see, I have the J presser foot already attached, the standard presser foot. I'm gonna do a single straight stitch. I'm gonna go for a half inch seam allowance with this. I'm gonna start sewing. I start sewing and then anchor it back. And actually, I'm gonna make a small adjustment. I work through that and get about a quarter inch seam allowance. That other allowance is just too much. I usually pull through put my arm through the machine. Keep away from all moving parts, of course. Sometimes it's easy to use a walking foot. And I'm using blue thread in the top and blue thread on the bottom. It's a navy thread that's in the machine. You're not gonna really be able to see it through the fabric anyway. Some people could also use a serger to get this done. I'm not gonna do the serging just yet. For the simple fact that I still want to check the fit on this now. And so before I go ahead and surge it, I want to make sure I like what's going on. First scene for the body panel. Flip it over. Same thing. I can surge these edges if I want to. I can overlock them if I want to. We'll get more into that with the finishing towards the end. But typically, they press flat. We do a multitude of different things to finish this off. We'll hop on over to the other side. Lift up the presser foot, right up to the edge of the needle. Let me take your clips out. You don't want those running through the machine. The little knife on the back of the sewing machine that I keep a little bit of the extra thread out for so that I can go ahead and slide it in there and slice it. Second body panel stitch. It's actually okay so if this isn't even. We could do one or two things. We could run this through the serger or we can overlock stitch it and cut out any overlock stitching using the machine and cut out any of the material that's outside of the overlock. So now we're gonna do the shoulder same place. I don't want to move around on me. Same deal. I'm gonna run this through the machine. Move it right up to the section of the needle. This guard here is gonna keep the stitch from going too wonky. I bought that from Amazon. I think there are multiple versions of this. They have the one that's a part of the presser foot that also gives this gauging to let you know and keep your seams straight. So as a beginning designer seamstress, depending on what your adjectives and specialty is, it's I think it's beneficial. The best to bring your needle up when you then adjust the feed lever so that you can pull the fabric through, I, would su I wouldn't suggest pulling the needle, the thread, th just through forcibly. And kind of better be careful with your tension, otherwise it'll get a little bubbly, especially dealing with stretchy fabric. Just 
just like that. Shoulder seams done. Body seams done. So we basically got our sleeveless tank. Now, basically got our body portions of the sleeveless tank. We'll check fit shortly. As you guys have noticed, the front is a little longer than the back. For the simple reason, we're gonna do a rolled hem on this one at about one inch or so, and it's gonna take up that extra slack. Also remember, we're deconstructing the back, so it's gonna be longer anyway, so don't worry about that. It's probably a good time now to trim off these guys once we check fit to make sure it fits our bodies. And stay tuned, we have to work on the neck line. Show you guys how to do that. Actually work on this piece and then attach it. And then the half sleeves. So this fabric. Almost there, it's coming along. We got like a full garment now. Okay, so we're gonna start prepping the sleeves. And we're gonna do that by stitching across here. Single straight stitch. Prep the other sleeve right behind that. So I like to go two stitches forward, two stitches back, and then two sleeves. Prepped. So you're gonna flip that connecting thread. Now what we're gonna do. We're gonna take that, fold it in half. What we're gonna end up with is this clean seam. This will be the edge that we attach to the armholes. This will be our exposed edge. Fold it, clean and neat. We sewed on the wrong side, straight stitch. We're gonna flip it over to the right side where we have our marker of what side is what. Probably would be a good idea to press these, press these flat or trim the edges so that way they don't bulk up. Our sleeves, and since it's not technically it's technically just some ribbing we're using. It's not technically a sleeve. We would have had to use a different shape for the sleeve. I have a sleeve pattern somewhere around. Do a full sleeve, we would have needed this pattern. Something like that. Depending on the size, etc. But since this will be somewhat of a convertible garment, fellas, this of course, if you were gonna rock it, tank top, you can wear this as a shirt, a dress, style it up with a belt. So many different things you can do. Also, we can add some cuts to it. We can really jazz it up. And one of the trickier pieces is gonna be this collar front. Since we're working on the V-neck, we're gonna have to figure this part out. So I have this folded in half because I want the fabric to be double. This will be our exposed edge. We're gonna use this edge and sew it down. Let's fold this with the right sides facing each other, wrong side up. We're gonna put this through the machine with the edge, the very edge of this fabric, facing away from me, or well, furthest away from me. I'm gonna move this guy, because I need some room. I don't need to be restricted. You know? And put it right up to the needle. And what I wanna do is hit it on a 45 degree angle so that my last stitch comes through the corner. So, now what we should end up with is a chevron that's gonna match the V, the neck of the V. Now what I have to do is clip this off. Trim these threads off and we're gonna trim this off so that it can start to lay flat. If you can, try to get that in one swap.
pin this in place to get a measurement or a feel for where everything's gonna fall. I'm going through three layers of fabric so it's a little tough to get the needle, the pin. And the bodice, if you will, of the garment is still on the wrong side and I'm attaching the collar to the inside, which is the right side. I've learned to not flow against the energy of the universe. If something's providing you a lot of resistance, chances are it might not be the best thing to do or work through at the time. That's what I do. When I'm working through my designs, I'm noticing, ugh, I just can't get this right. Time for a break. Nothing wrong with taking a break and coming back to it. It's basically what the inside is gonna look like. This is a preview of what it's gonna look like on the right side. Once we sew it down, we'll get those clean join seams that are on the inside. But to do that, we have to sew all this down. All right. And since I opted to do my collar in pieces, instead of one continual piece, I have to figure out how this lines up. So I'm gonna do that basically by measuring around the back. A little mark. And there, know where I'm gonna cut. Measure, use my tape measure, what we need. So it looks like we need roughly 13 inches. I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna cut 14 inches though and use a half inch of seam allowance on each side. So that will be our magic number. Look at that. It's technically what we need. Two identical sides. Run through the machine. Press those guys flat. Okay, so put these bad boys together. Other side, real quick, real quick. Since we want to do this thing zero waste, we have to make a few amendments. I'm using scrap pieces that I cut from the body pieces when I was originally cutting the pattern, cutting the fabric for the pattern. So have to make it work. Where's one of my favorite mentors, Tim Gunn? Had to make it work, Mom. Back tech. We nip those off so that when we fold this, we don't get a lot of bunching. That back. Boom. Now that we know what we know, sew those down. Got my little humidifier on for a little bit of ambiance. You may see a little smoke. Don't be alarmed. Ambiance and aromatherapy. That's why I'm with it. Fold them. Everybody folds over neatly. It's basically the collar attachment. Or a neck binder. I have my own labels, so I can go ahead and add it now.
label attached. Always put your caps back on your needles. I've knocked this thing over or a time of 12. We're gonna remove pins as we go along. Now once we get to this junction, we're gonna have to leave the needle in, lift the presser foot, rotate the garment. Needle still in, press the foot up. We are rotating the garment to slightly change the direction of sewing to get into that, that chevron to ensure that it is prominent and neat. Walk it right up to this edge here. Get it on through. Almost walked it too far to this pen. Boom. Neck binder. Done. The seams line up nice and neat. Seems line up pretty neatly. Happy about that. Voila, neck binder done. I'm gonna trim off all these little excess threads because they can be a nuisance later. Let's get them now. Let's tie that off. So it don't unravel again. We technically can drop these leaves on in here, right? So I'm gonna take my neat seam, line it up with this guy. Remember my shirt is still inside out. I'm gonna take the sleeve and place it inside of the armhole. On the right side. Side, side, and shoulder point. Stop calling this a sleeve. It's basically just ribbing. Fabric that I got from uh, fabric stores. I usually go into fabric stores and grab a few yards of whatever is on sale because again, it can be scrap material, it could be I can use it as a muslin for a working design. I can, you can use it for a lot of different things. That seam. Anything that's roughly less than two to four dollars a yard and they have a lot of it, I try to get as much of that as I can, especially places like Walmart, Vogue Fabrics, um, Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics, etc. So I'm making my business to every city I'm in to run by their fabric stores and just see what they got. Cause you never know what you can find. And like I said, I try to buy as much of it as I can if it's a good deal or on sale. All right, so our sleeve is all clipped in. I'm gonna open up the seam and I was just a little bit here. We'll do a half. Now, to start setting the sleeve, we leave the basic garment inside out and we put the sleeve in the armhole on the right side. I clipped it in place. I don't want to pin it just yet. But what I want to do is leave the sleeve on the right side so that way when we flip it right side out, we come up with that clean edge and we get the fold on the exposed side. Meanwhile, this 
raw edge. We join the raw edges together. Remember, we want to keep our seams open and flat. Now, I'm going to line up what would be the seam here. I'm going to line up that seam or this seam with that seam because I want this to look really clean and professional and finished. That's what's most important. The garment looks well finished. Now forgive me, I'm moving a little slow. I had a tough day today. And trying to channel that energy, a negative energy to come in and create. Drop our presser foot. It may be necessary throughout the process to kind of stretch the fabric just a little bit to ensure that everything lines up nice and tight. Two forward, two back. And there we go. Any areas that you go over where there is a join seam, try to get through that by sewing it flat and open. I'm gonna guide that under the press of foot to make sure it goes in that flat. Slow first. Voila, clip these threads. Attach sleeve. This is the inside. This is the outside. They got to line up right on time. Nice and neat. Sold it like that. And then flip it out. Nice and neat. We're gonna do the same for the other sleeve. I'm a stickler for lining up seams and the print and all of that. Like I don't it just looks better to me. Some might call me perfectionist. I'm just particular. So same again. Inside out. What you're gonna take your sleeve and put it right side inside the sleeve armhole I'm just setting this in there so that it's in I'll adjust as we go along by hand I don't particularly like to pin because it's a it's a commitment it's just a preference and then this doesn't damage the fabric so I'm here for that for such a thing Back to and forward. Again, stretching it just a little bit. Make sure it's in that nice and top. You gotta keep rotating that fabric so it doesn't do a lot of bunching up and wrinkling, especially when you're sewing sleeves. I can technically remove this piece here. I don't like to though. <laughs> I just go around it because I feel like it fills up the sleeve shape, the roundness of the armhole. This junction, we want to do what? Make sure those seams are open so we can press them flat. All on. Now we got V-neck, we got sleeves, or 
half sleeves. Some ribbing. I'm going to roll him at about an inch. I got to press the foot for that too. This bad boy right here is a half inch. So you roll the hem, roll the fabric up in there and run it through. Get that clean, smooth edge. We're still on the wrong side. I'm gonna feed this bad boy in there. I'm gonna switch the stitch over to a one and move it all the way over to the right, which is opening up the stitch width to seven. That proved to be a little more challenging than I expected. I'm gonna pull the seam out because it's a little wavy and it didn't catch like I needed to. I'll fix that. There we have it. Pretty clean hemline. It's a little wavy, but that's okay. For the most part, it look good. We're not even striving for perfection. We're striving for completion right now. You very rarely ever hear me say that. Whew, okay. Pretty much finished. We're going to leave the back unhemmed because we're going to start the deconstruction portion but let's go ahead and try this bad boy on on the right side of course not bad <laughs> 